Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's discussion with ZS um, on our data science challenge for 2018. My name is Pranava Goundan. I am an associate partner with ZS in our US offices, and I lead up our advanced data science capability uh, here at ZS uh, in North America. Um, I would like to welcome you all to today's session talking about our um, data scientist challenge for 2018. So in terms of the agenda for today, uh, what I what we're planning to do is over the next hour, we are going to cover a few different topics. Um, in the first 45 minutes, I'd like to share with you a little bit of an introduction to ZS. Who are we? Um, I would like to share with you a little bit more about the type of work we are doing uh, from an advanced data science AI machine learning standpoint at ZS the clients and industries that we serve, the types of problems we are solving, in some case studies. Um, I'd, I'll spend a little bit of time today sharing with you a little bit more information also about the data scientist role at ZS, the type of work that we do, uh, the career progression, and what uh, a typical day in the life of a data scientist, especially in India, uh, might look like. I realize we have a global audience today, um, so as much as possible, I'll also try to address um, uh, how certain components uh, of today's presentation might be different for our audience members from India versus other parts of the globe, including the US. Um, and then I'll present a, a little bit of a brief introduction to our data scientist challenge for 2018. What are the skills we are looking for and, and some details about the challenge? We leave the last 15 minutes for today uh, for Q&A. Um, so please, uh, if you have any questions, please do type in your questions and uh, my colleagues and I will be uh, going through those questions. Um, we realize that there are a number of participants today, so we probably won't be able to answer all your questions, but we will make it a point to at least answer um, uh, what we can in the 15 minutes and make every effort to answer any other remaining questions offline. Uh, so thank you in advance for your participation today. And so with that, I'll get started with uh, uh, a little bit of an introduction to ZS. So who are we? Um, ZS is the world's largest consulting firm that is ex exclusively focused on delivering impact uh, through commercial and R&D solutions. We are uh, a firm with about 5,500 employees, professionals spread all over the globe uh, in 22 offices worldwide, uh, supporting more than 1,200 clients in 30 different industries. Um, the types of domains in the areas where we do work at ZS is, covers the gamut. We do work ranging from R&D, uh, trying to understand a life cycle strategy, especially we'll talk a little bit more about life sciences as a space where we do a fair bit of work. So especially in the R&D space, we do a lot of work with the life sciences industry. But apart from that, we do a lot of work also in strategy, marketing, sales, and bringing all of this to life through operations and technology, which are obviously integral components of what we also support in our data science capability. So what makes us ZS different from a number of other consulting firms that you may have heard of? Well, we are an expertise-based consulting firm. We firmly believe in developing a deep focus to best serve our clients on the problems that they are tackling. And so for us, that focus means focus in sales, marketing and R&D. For us, that focus means deep industry expertise. When we serve our clients in the travel and transportation space, we bring experts in that domain. When we serve our clients in the life sciences space, we bring experts in that domain. Uh, we believe um, uh, in a very fact and data-driven approach. Our roots here at ZS is that our firm was founded by two professors in the marketing group at, uh, at Kellogg and, Lee, and Professor Andy Zoltners and Prabha Sinha, um, and both of whom uh, uh, were, are, in fact, very data-driven individuals. So the core of our firm is uh, oriented in a data-driven approach to helping our clients solve their challenges and, and having an impact through that. Uh, in doing that, though, we do take a broad, integrated range of approach, uh, starting from advisory services to help our clients even best understand the challenge that they have or the problem that they have, uh, helping to formulate it, if you will, 
uh, all the way through not only solving the problem but implementing it operationalizing it automating it uh, so we span the gamut from strategy to implementation and so as i've talked through these pieces of who we are i do want to distinguish us zs from other boutique consulting firms that might be focused uh, in a in a in a niche domain or with a niche focus area uh, from a zs perspective we range from strategy to implementation i'd also like to differentiate ourselves from general management consulting firms because we truly do believe in expertise based focus for our clients and so our focus areas are sales marketing and r&d in particular okay so what do we do and how are we um, um, organized to deliver on the different spaces that i was just talking about um, we have uh, generally break our uh, uh, organization into three core pillars or three core functions that serve our clients the first function is business consulting where we help our clients answer questions around what the business should be doing the second core pillar is business operations here we help our clients answer questions around how can the business best be organized to do what they need to achieve and the third pillar of our uh, or the third function in our uh, uh, company is business technology this is where we are helping our clients think through how information technology can best be used to support the business who are the clients that we serve so as i was mentioning earlier on you know we serve over 1200 clients in 90 countries worldwide in a range of industries okay that being said uh, a large proportion of the work that we do at cs is oriented in the life sciences space we work with the top 20 pharmaceutical companies across a broad range of sales and marketing issues but we serve other industries as well so apart from pharmaceuticals and biotechnology medical devices we also serve high tech and telecommunications financial services travel and transportation and industrial goods and services and one of the unique things about our data science capability at zs is that our capability is one of the few capabilities that spans supporting all these different industry verticals um, that we support our clients on and so we'll talk a little bit about that um, as i share with you some more information about what we do as a data science team so um, uh, a little bit about our um, uh, data science capability uh, at zs we are a group of 50 plus data scientists spread across the globe this is a picture we took recently uh, from our india data science summit uh, earlier this year um, with a number of members of our team um, i'd love to share with you uh, some of the the type of uh, experience that we have in our leadership team here uh, at zs from a data science perspective um, our leadership team overall um, we are headed by uh, pratab khedkar whom you'll see in the bottom left of this um, slide uh, who is uh, the partner who leads our overall data science work globally um, as you'll see from pratab's background on this slide uh, pratab is based in philadelphia uh, i am as well as am i based in philadelphia and pratap has a phd from uc berkeley in computer science in fact in artificial intelligence um, and has a btech from um, iit delhi our india data science capability is led up by shankar vishwanathan who is on the top right uh, or top left um, shankar um, is a principal in our pune office soon moving to set up our bangalore offices in data science um, he has a phd from purdue um, uh, and uh, an undergrad degree uh, uh, from IIT Madras. We have individuals such as Dr. Prakash Prakash, uh, who is a manager in our Pune office, um, soon also moving to our Bengaluru offices. Prakash, in fact, has two PhDs um, uh, related to data science. Uh, and then we have individuals also such as Kapil Jain, who is a data science manager uh, in our Princeton office. Um, Kapil has an MBA from uh, I am Koi Code uh, and a, a bachelor's degree from Thapar University. Uh, and Kapil is, as uh, he would describe, uh, um, a self taught hacker uh, and data scientist. So, as you will see, the range of uh, backgrounds of our uh, leadership team is fairly diverse and rich. Uh, we all come from either academic roots 
or um, I'll call it more of hacker uh, uh, self taught data scientist uh, roots uh, with the key focus of being able to help our clients best formulate problems and solve those problems as best that we can. Okay, um, and I, I, I would be remiss in not calling out my uh, other colleagues here who lead up our data science leadership team. Uh, we have a number of uh, our other leaders from an India perspective on the top row, as you will see, Yogesh Sharma, uh, Nilesh Kadam, who in fact is uh, uh, a Kegel Grandmaster, uh, Sagar Madgi uh, and Ravi Ippili. And from a US perspective, or North America perspective, our capability group also has leaders such as Srinivas Chilakuri, myself, Mehul Singh, and Vikas Hegre. So we are a, a fairly diverse um, a group of individuals with different backgrounds, uh, with one common uh, interest, data science, and how we can best uh, use it, uh, use our toolkit to help solve important problems for our clients and have an impact for them. So what do we do? Um, we have a key, uh, fo key set of focus areas where um, we are working with our clients um, uh, to shape innovations. Uh, um, from key focus areas perspective, I'll talk through some of those shortly, um, but they span a whole range of different applications across industry verticals related to marketing, related to sales enablement and predictive analytics that can support that, related to R&D um, in life sciences, to looking at patient data to understand the impact of different courses of treatment and what could potentially be life-saving. Uh, for uh, certain sub, sub segments of patients, clinical trial operations, uh, and natural language processing applications. Um, we do a lot of purposeful experiments to support our clients uh, using a range of different AI approaches, building chat bots, uh, building speech recognition APIs, uh, and a range of different machine learning approaches as well um, in the types of uh, domains that we are conducting these experiments. Um, we build products as a data science capability so not only are we solving problems for our clients, oftentimes we are scaling. After we've solved a problem three times, we believe that it can be scaled into a product. We build products for our clients, products such as next best engagement, products such as patient trigger alert platforms, uh, products such as an end-to-end -end customer centric marketing app. Uh, and we also shape the community uh, of practitioners at ZS. While we are a group of about 50 plus data scientists, we are a broader group of about a thousand individuals across the globe that does analytics and analytical technology related work. And so we shape that community uh, that does this type of work uh, by conducting R and Python training, by running challenges and hackathons uh, with them. I want to call out that our experience is not just restricted from a data science capability perspective to model development, but also deployment and management of models. While we talk today a lot about our data scientist function, uh, where we do the problem formulation, the exploratory analysis and AI and modeling, we also have colleagues, as I was mentioning, who focus on model deployment, uh, who are AI ML engineers, who focus on solution design, application engineering, think about UI and UX uh, elements of the products that we build. And we also are, therefore have to do lifecycle management if you're deploying these models. So we have AI ML admins, who support us in deploying these models and managing them um, uh, with our clients uh, through doing model provenance design and setup for our clients. So what specific domains are we having an impact in from a data science AI machine learning perspective? Um, I want to call out four spaces. The first space is R&D, especially from a life sciences perspective. So what type of work are we doing in R&D prior to launch? So the type of work that we are doing in R&D uh, includes a couple of examples that I have here. The first is um, um, there is a, a disease which is called NASH um, uh, or fatty liver disease um, that's highly asymptomatic, right? It's a debilitating disease for uh, patients that have it. Um, for a disease like NASH, one of the challenges is that it's not a well-diagnosed disease. Uh, today, unfortunately, because there are no uh, tre good treatment options available. However, that's rapidly changing. In the next few years, we expect pretty revolutionary treatments uh, coming to market to help patients suffering from NASH. 
But in order to best help those patients, we also need to help the clinical community with diagnosing and identifying who those patients might be who might be suffering from NASH, experiencing other symptoms that have not been translated to NASH. So from a data science perspective, some of the type of work that we are doing is using novel machine learning techniques to help identify patients or predict which patients are highly likely to be suffering from a disease such as NASH um, uh, based on patterns that we observe in their longitudinal data, um, their prior therapies that they have been experiencing, the prior conditions that they have been diagnosed with, the prior procedures that they may have been undergoing. Um, so we use machine learning to help identify those patients that are at risk or that those patients who ought to be diagnosed uh, with debilitating diseases. NASH is one example. We've done the same kind of work in oncology to help uh, predict which patients might have uh, metastasis of their cancer, which might need uh, more aggressive treatment. Um, so that's the type of work we're doing from uh, an R&D perspective, helping to identify these patients. Hopefully we can identify these patients. We can help even enroll them in clinical trials. We're also using um, NLP-based techniques to intelligently gather and visualize clinical trial information. So one of the challenges with clinical trials is, um, as you may know, clinical trials are undertaken at thousands of places around the globe, and data needs to be collected from various of these clinical trial centers. Unfortunately, the data um, uh, uh, assembly process today is a highly manual process. So one of the things that we are doing is using NLP-based approaches to try to gather, visualize, assemble, integrate these data, so this data from multiple unstructured sources uh, so that it can be robustly used to prove um, the, the clinical efficacy, safety um, uh, of the therapies that are undergoing these clinical trials. So those are two examples of the type of work we do uh, in R&D prior to launch. We do a lot of work uh, in the commercial space uh, where we are helping our clients in particular think about from a marketing perspective, how they can use AI and machine learning algorithms to personalize what messages they might want to send to an individual and when they might want to send those messages and most importantly, what channel might they want to send those messages to through. So we think about what content, what channel and what cadence um, that uh, these messages need to be sent to the right customer, the four C's if you will. Um, we are also from a commercial standpoint using AI solutions to uh, enable triggers that we can send to alert physicians uh, about, uh, for example, one of their patients being at a high risk uh, to have metastasis of their cancer, which might need more aggressive therapy. So we take the types of AI ML work we're doing from an R&D perspective, but also bring it into a commercial perspective, hopefully help create clinical decision support assets that physicians can use uh, in life sciences. We're doing work in supply chain and manufacturing, using machine learning to forecast on a daily basis the different uh, stock keeping units or SKUs uh, that um, uh, companies might have. As you would imagine, they have inventory that spans oftentimes tens of thousands, if not millions of SKUs, and they would like to optimize their inventory. But in order to best do that, they need to be able to forecast that better. And so we are using AI machine learning to do that better. And then finally, uh, we're also using AI and machine learning in IT and enterprise functions. Um, I was talking about this from an R&D perspective, but how can we use NLP and machine learning techniques to automate data standardization processes? If we have data being gathered from thousands of centers across the, the globe where clinical trials are being run. Well, they're being that data has been gathered in multiple different formats. How can we standardize that? Those are the types of applications that we're also doing uh, NLP and ML based work in. So um, what would you be doing if you join our team? Um, broadly, three types of questions that we are helping our clients answer. Um, if I go uh, uh, anti-clockwise, we start with the number of perception-based problems, helping our clients uh, better sense and understand the different types of unstructured data they might have 
text data, audio data, image data using a number of the cutting edge algorithms and uh, leveraging the significant progress that has been made in the space in the last five years or so. Uh, we are helping our clients with reasoning and planning. So using a host of machine learning approaches, supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement based um, to solve important problems uh, around predictive analytics, around optimization and around inference. Most importantly, we are helping embed those analytics for our clients uh, into platforms so they can use um, those AI ML uh, insights and analytics even in their interactions uh, or in their granular decision making as they make thousands and millions of decisions uh, on a daily basis through bots, intelligent assistants, recommender systems, conversational interfaces. So this is the type of work uh, that you would be doing if you were to join ZS, spanning the types of industries and, and domains that I was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, I also want to highlight that the types of problems that you would be solving um, from a data science perspective today, um, over the next five years and next 10 years, uh, it's a very exciting time. We are solving important transformative problems in the life sciences space. Problems that will help with better drug discovery and management, helping to better understand which molecules might be the right molecules uh, to treat certain illnesses and bind with certain types of proteins. Uh, we're using data science and AI machine learning to optimize patient selection, which patient might be the right patient to treat with a specific therapy. Uh, so this notion of personalized medicine, bringing it to life. Um, we're using analytics for disease prediction and diagnosis. These are important problems. Uh, if we were to know that an if we could use analytics to predict that an individual is likely to have a, a cardiovascular event and prevent it, we have the ability to save lives uh, in a very dramatic way, in a very unique way uh, that more traditional analytics has maybe not been able to do over the past few years. Um, we can create personalized treatment approaches for patients. Every individual is different. How can we use this data to best understand what treatment paradigm makes the most sense for every individual? There's a number of problems there that are of common interest to all of our clients um, around this, as this becomes the way of the future in, in healthcare and life sciences. And finally, um, we can help with disease management. Many of us know individuals who are on different treatments, taking different therapies, but they don't take their therapies consistently. They don't take their drugs consistently that they're supposed to be taking for their treatment. How can we use analytics to predict which patients might be non-adherent and the reason that they may be non-adherent and device smart um, solutions, right, creative solutions to help drive adherence for those individuals based on the reasons that they might be non-adherent. Some individuals might be non-adherent because they're forgetting to refill their prescription at their pharmacy. Maybe we send them a text alert after their 30 days of uh, pills are over that you might want to go back to a pharmacy to pick up your next batch of prescriptions. Other individuals might have other challenges like they may not have coverage from their health insurance. Well, Maybe we could proactively start working with their health insurance uh, to make sure that they do have the coverage for the therapy that they need uh, to remain compliant with as they move from one employer to the next employer and their health insurance is likely to change. So there's a lot of different disease management solutions that are being enabled because of the cutting edge analytics that are possible today and are going to be coming to life over the next 10 years, especially in these spaces. So the work that we do here, we firmly believe has transformative potential, and we're very excited about uh, this type of project work uh, and engagement work that we're doing in life sciences. So with all that being said, um, what are the different roles at ZS um, um, that uh, you would go through if you were to join from a data science perspective? Um, I, I'd like to talk a little bit more about that. Um, the starting role at ZS is one of an associate. Uh, if you were to join us as an associate, the type of work you would be doing is exploring uh, the data and implementing algorithms to help solve our clients' business problems, right? Um, as you move forward and you become expert in implementing algorithms and, and, and EDA, exploratory data analyses, 
you'd probably get a good handle of how to actually better design the, the right set of uh, algorithms to use for a particular problem and not just implement them. You'd also have the ability to mentor junior team members. And so when you are ready for that point, you would move into the associate consultant role where you would be designing algorithms, mentoring associates. The next leg in your journey would be that as a consultant where you would be engaging with clients to actually help better formulate their problems. Our clients don't often come with clear problems or a clear ask of what they want. They have an issue that they are hoping to solve. Translating that into an analytical problem. Is an area where we can help support them. So we engage with our clients many times to better formulate their business problem as an analytical problem and then guiding our teams to create innovative solutions. So that consultant role is an integral role that they are the ones in, in interacting with our clients to better understand their problem, translate it into an analytical problem and come up with an innovative solution for it uh, while guiding the entire team. Um, as you progress in your career at ZS, you'd move into the manager role where you would be building capabilities, building assets, building products for ZS and our client organizations. And finally, um, after demonstrating um, success in that you would move into the roles of associate principal and principal uh, where we serve to demonstrate thought leadership to our clients in advanced data science uh, and push the frontier of what's possible with data science and what are the applications that can be enabled through it. Through all of this journey, um, I want to call out that there are two aspects that we uh, care deeply about the first is continuing to cultivate and strengthen your domain knowledge uh, apart from knowledge of all the different algorithmic uh, uh, techniques out there we want to make sure uh, you also are building strong domain knowledge in specific domains uh, and you're able to ho hone sorry not honor hone your business acumen skills how do we best communicate with our clients? We may come up with the best algorithm and the best predictive algorithm for a problem, but if we cannot explain to our clients the impact that that algorithm can have, the reason that that algorithm is making the types of predictions that it is and make that change real for them, they're never going to implement it. So having those business acumen skills to be able to drive organizational change with our clients is an integral part of what we do when as data science consultants. Um, it's more than just about being a data scientist. It's about being a data science consultant. So I'll call out that difference. Um, of course, in addition to all that, I think what we are very passionate about at ZS is that we want to do this in a way that is fulfilling for you. And the way we do that is by making sure that we are uh, living uh, a culture that we are all proud of, uh, a culture that is collaborative, um, a culture that is collegial um, uh, and a culture that is uh, always about doing the right thing for our clients in the right way. Um, we make sure that we support activities beyond all the cool algorithmic building that we can do uh, that make work a fun place for us. Uh, we invest a fair bit of our time and energy and resources in developing our next generation of leaders. People our, are our core asset. And so developing leaders is something that we care deeply about. And then uh, we make sure that we have the right set of processes and practices to make work fulfilling for you. If that means long or short term transfers to different places in the globe, frequent travel to visit your clients, uh, adapting work to your lifestyle that might make sense for you. Um, those are all practices and processes that we have set up to enable um, all our employees because each of us is different. We have different constraints. We have different objectives uh, um, that we're all seeking out uh, in our professional life. Uh, and so we want we recognize that uh, and we have processes to make sure that we can best address that in a systematic way. OK, um, so a little bit about what a typical day at ZS looks like. I'll caveat to say that this is very much uh, a day in the life of a data science associate in India. Uh, the timings you see here may not be reflective of uh, uh, where other colleagues uh, around the globe might uh, 
uh, be working more directly with their clients. Um, uh, for our teams in India, a uh, typical morning um, starts anywhere between 9.30 to 11 a.m., right? Um, CS is pretty flexible about our start times in India. We kick off, we offer breakfast to our, uh, our teams, um, and it's used mainly as a time for catching up with colleagues um, more informally, casually, as well as um, oftentimes on, on things that don't involve work at all, right? Uh, it's our time to catch up and respond to emails uh, for those of us that like to stay ahead of the curve so we can actually get work done during the time uh, um, uh, that we want to do heads down work. Um, uh, and it's time for daily huddle to catch up on project progress and discuss the work plan for the day. Usually our afternoons are about uh, discussing the specific tasks that we are doing uh, with our ACs um, and our consultants, making sure we have good clarity, uh, showing them the progress that we are ma making, um, going through research papers, studying new methodologies that would make sense to implement, brainstorming on the code, uh, the execution that we are undertaking, um, uh, and obviously, as uh, we move into lunchtime, discussing these, continuing to discuss these ideas over lunch. Um, our evenings are where our work goes very much into implementation mode. Uh, we are now pivoting to model training. Um, uh, sometimes for individuals will break for a recreational activity. It's oftentimes when we do our skill development workshops or track meetings uh, to meet as a group um, and, and talk about uh, some of the cool innovative work our colleagues are doing. Um, and the night times are often uh, in India, um, 5 to 8 p.m., the times when we are discussing our progress with our team, our global teams, colleagues from North America, colleagues from Europe, colleagues from Japan and other parts of Asia, getting on calls, um, uh, providing them with the update for the day, signing off uh, with end of day emails. So that's what the typical day looks like for our uh, data science uh, associates in India. What are we looking for in candidates? I talked a little bit about this and I want to reinforce this. Um, we are looking for more than just strong data scientists. We're looking for individuals who want to be data science consultants. And so in addition to having the strong problem solving and analytical skills of a data scientist, in addition to having that comfort with structured unstructured data, those knowledge of different machine learning algorithms, as a data science consultant, we think it's critical that individuals have strong communication skills. Our work is only as good as we can help share that with uh, our audiences com convince them, convince our clients that that is in fact something that they should implement or operationalize. Um, so communication is a core part of uh, 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 what we're looking for uh, in individuals. Apart from being a, a strong data scientist, we think it's important that you can communicate the work that you are doing and the impact that it could have. Uh, and we also want your curiosity to continue to research and experiment. Um, this is a field that is ever evolving. Uh, so that emphasis on research and experimentation is critical. I mentioned many of our leaders today are self-taught data scientists. And what has made them leaders is their ability to continue to learn and grow uh, over the course of their careers. And this is something that's critical for all of us uh, who are in the data science, AI machine learning space. So this is something we care a lot about uh, as we are uh, reviewing candidates for uh, data scientist positions at ZS. Okay. So um, um, in the last 10 minutes, I'm going to um, uh, share some more details um, around our, our competition before I uh, move to answering some of your questions. Um, so our D ZS Data Science Challenge for 2018, as some of you might be familiar with it, uh, is beginning this week um, and goes through a series of steps. Um, first of all, if you haven't already registered for the challenge, please do. Uh, you should have access to the link uh, to register for it. Um, we are going to uh, post our data science problem online on the Hacker Earth platform uh, by July 20th. And um, we're hoping you'll spend your time July 20th to 23rd um, to solve that problem online. Right. Um, by the 27th of July, we will be shortlisting candidates from the challenge uh, who we'd like to bring into our offices. Uh, so the idea is that we'd like you to travel for an offline datathon in our ZS offices across the globe 
for those of you in India, it might mean India. For those of you in other parts of the globe, it might mean an office that's close to you, right? Um, from August, thir August 3rd and 4th are the dates that we are intending to do our offline datathon in our ZS offices. You would be competing with uh, budding data scientists in those countries. Um, and um, the idea would be competing for a pre-placement pre um, interview call letter. You would meet with our industry leaders, um, both in the data science space and across our verticals as well, and get to experience our ZS culture. You know, we can talk about this on a slide, but we'd love for you to experience it uh, firsthand for yourselves in our offices. Um, after, uh, for those of you that have that do receive a pre-placement interview call letter from us, there will be a recruiting day, right? Um, we'll work with our training and placement cell, uh, align on a mutually agreeable day for you to come back in uh, for a, a final set of, I'll call it a truncated or a fast-tracked interview process uh, with some of our leaders to make sure that you re you uh, reflect our values, that you res that you understand uh, the direction of our firm. Uh, the areas that we are planning on investing in, which I talked a little bit about today, but to learn about that in more depth um, um, and to make sure we are a good fit uh, before you would receive your final offer. So that's the, uh, the logistical details of our ZS Data Science Challenge for 2018. Um, and I did want to present to you a quick recap of when we did our Young Data Scientist Challenge in 2017, what were we able to achieve? We had about 10,000 plus data scientists that uh, competed from the top 100 schools in India. Um, we had 100 plus candidates uh, who had submissions above our baseline and our, uh, what we were looking for as, as uh, what we were demarcating as, uh, demarcating as good performance, right? Um, the top 35 submissions were invited for a day long interactive workshop at our ZS offices. And 15 individuals were in fact given offers through this challenge. We're hoping for more participation and more offers this year, especially as we grow to set up new offices, such as our office in Bengaluru, which is going to be specifically focused on data science, AI, machine learning, and big data platforms. So we're uh, we're welcoming your active participation in our contest this year. Um, some tips and tricks for you for the challenge. First, um, read blogs, right? Uh, it's a good way to learn about machine learning algorithms and optimization methods and a lot of empirical um, evidence that is being found as a number of approaches are being used on different types of problems uh, that might be common in some way. Uh, so it's a great way to learn uh, about which techniques might be, be best suited in which, which situations. Uh, case studies, you know, we'd certainly recommend uh, referring to Kegel challenges or kernels uh, to explore um, what worked where, right? Uh, and then finally, um, styling guides, you know, uh, make sure that uh, you can um, learn about practice modules and efficient coding skills in R and Python, which are effectively the lingua franca and data science today. Okay. So that uh, completes my portion of the presentation and the content I was planning to walk through. Um, I'm now going to shift my attention to your questions. I realize that um, over the last 40 minutes or so, a number of you have submitted a number of great questions online. Um, I'm going to start um, with um, uh, a few of these questions. Um, in the interest of time, I won't be able to cover each and every one of them, but I'm going to start with a few and uh, and see if I can help to answer that. So the first question uh, that I have that I'll be answering is, uh, uh, as a fresher and a person who has a deep interest in the field, but lacks a lot of prior experience in the field, um, I want to know how much emphasis does a firm like ZS give on training uh, new entrants to help them learn about the field, right? Um, great question. Um, I think that's something that, um, you know, even when I joined ZS many years ago, I, I joined straight out of grad school. Um, you know, I did my undergrad in computer science. I did my PhD subsequently, and then I joined ZS, right? Uh, so we recognize that many of us have um, joined ZS or continue to join ZS without much of a, you know, um, uh, prior experience. We may have learned things from a school, from an academic perspective, but implementing it uh, in a real life setting is oftentimes a different challenge. 
So the way that we do it is through forums such as algorithms. I was talking about algorithms. It's our internal data science community. Um, um, the idea of algorithms is it's a place where individuals share some of the cool work that they are doing. Share some more specifics about the industry that maybe that problem was a particular problem was solved in. Um, um, uh, and um, um, and the types of techniques that worked for it, right? In addition, we have, I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll probably be remiss if I didn't call out that we have about a year and a half long onboarding training plan if you join ZS, right? Where you may have learned a lot of data science skills and uh, probably coming in, but we still would like to make sure that you have access to trainings in various data science and domain skills. As you're working in life sciences, how do we best equip you so that you're comfortable working in life sciences, understand the different types of data, the nuances of the different types of data, uh, understand the different problem contexts, what matters and what's critical to look out for in those problem contexts, right? Um, so we make sure that we have a very rigorous training plan. In fact, we have developed a partnership with Coursera, if some of you are uh, are familiar with the online uh, uh, platform, uh, learning platform Coursera. We've partnered with them to offer online courses in uh, AI, ML, data science. We have in-house boot camps that we do from a domain perspective. And we are also oftentimes bringing in pretty well-known external professional trainers um, uh, to help you in your journey. So there are a number of investments that we make both from a uh, a rigorous training curriculum perspective from a community learning perspective to make sure that you can get comfortable both with the data science skills but also with the domain knowledge that will help you be successful right um, so hopefully that answers that question um, i am going to answer the next question uh, next question that i have here um, i am from triple it kalyani uh, west bengal I currently work in data analytics and prediction area. I have done a summer internship at IIT Madras. Um, we are facing a problem in placements. Um, uh, so please let me know some solutions. Uh, are there internship offers, et cetera, that we are offering? Uh, great question. I think as hopefully uh, you caught from my presentation, if you participate in the upcoming data science challenge uh, between the 20th and 23rd of this, this month, um, it'll enable you uh, to uh, get to know more about us, get for us to get, get to know more about you. And we would be shortlisting candidates from the data science challenge, successful candidates from the data science challenge for interviews at ZS. Um, so it's a great uh, channel uh, to seek out offers if uh, you're looking for um, uh, joining ZS as an option, right? Um, there's another question which is uh, is zs open is the is our contest open for working professionals um uh, in fact yes not only is our contest open and open to working professionals but even our um uh, hiring is open to working professionals we oftentimes do lateral hiring um for individuals that who do have experience so we very much welcome that um there's another question that i have here which is what is the difference um between uh, um, decision analytics and a data science consultant? So great question. For those of you that do know yes, we have, apart from the data science role, which I talked about today, we have a different role called the decision analytics uh, role. Um, the, the, our decision analytics role uh, in fact, is one of the roles that ZS has had from the very beginning. Our data science role is something that we created in the last three years. The way you would want to think about the decision analytic role is that it is very much focused on um, helping doing analytics mainly with structured data. Okay, uh, Structured data, more classical, statistical, um, and algorithmic approaches, um, um, and is, is much of the foundational work that we've been doing here at GS for the last 30, 35 years. Um, work that we do in R and SAS and Excel, um, analytical work that we do on those platforms across a various range of problems, more broad than even the problems that I talked about today uh, for our clients. Um, uh, and so that our decision analytics role is, I, I'll call it, it's, it's meant for individuals who have some um, they have an analytical leaning, 
um, but don't have maybe as much analytics training. Um, um, uh, so more familiar with, I call it, you know, basic statistics, um, obviously strong uh, uh, mathematical skills, um, but familiarity primarily with basic statistics, some basic algorithms, some basic coding. Um, from a data science perspective, all those requirements are overemphasized. Uh, knowing more tools and techniques, uh, knowing going beyond statistics to machine learning, um, uh, and, a, and a formal understanding, deep formal understanding of machine learning, knowing a lot more coding and um, uh, and familiarity with languages, platforms to handle data at scale, uh, data of large volume, size, um, velocity, big data, basically. Um, uh, so, uh, and obviously unstructured data is a big part of what we do as well. Um, I have another question here, uh, which is, um, what is the software to be used for the upcoming challenge? I want to call out that um, there is no compulsion for our end to use one software versus another, um, or more clearly language, right? You can use any language um, that uh, you are comfortable with. What we are more interested in is understanding your uh, approach to formulating that problem. Uh, the uh, types of algorithms or techniques that you used to solve that problem uh, and getting an, a better understanding of your ability to communicate all of that to us as we go through the process. Uh, obviously for the contest, the communication piece is less important. It's more important to, uh, we're obviously more focused on the quality of the solution that you provide, uh, the level of accuracy that it's able to uh, uh, bring, if you will. Okay. Um, let me see if I can help answer some additional questions apart from those that you shared. Um, So um, there's, a, there's a good question here, which um, um, someone has asked, which is how does big data differ from data science? I think that's a very important question. It's a good question. Um, ZS does have a big data capability, right? Our big data capability is primarily focused around how we can ingest big data, data that is either large in volume velocity, very, very fast, right? Think about social media data uh, or more importantly, wearable technologies data that's coming at a very, very fast speed. And yet we need to ingest, process, synthesize it um, or data that has a lot of variety. So highly unstructured data. How do we standardize highly unstructured data to support analytics? Our big data capability is more focused on the ingestion of big data that has volume, variety, velocity, um, it is focused on uh, housing that in big data cloud-based platforms. Uh, it is focused on processing that data at scale, standardizing it at scale, so that it is ready for analytics. So our big data capability is more of a, um, I'll call it a, 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 a capability that is indexed on understanding of big data technologies uh, and familiarity with handling data so as to prime it for our data scientists as well as other decision analytics team members and other members at ZS to be able to consume, not just members at ZS, but also for our clients. From a data science perspective, um, and the way I would differentiate it from our big data capability is it's more of an analytical capability than a technology capability. Of course, as, as data scientists, we have to be comfortable with the different big data platforms, uh, you know, as we are solving problems at scale. But what's more important is how how well we can formulate the problem, how well we can identify what approaches might be best suited to solve that problem, how we how well we can explore and come up with a strong solution for it, and how well we can design an approach to deploy it. So I'll also call out that this last piece, which is deployment of um, uh, of the algorithms that we come up with, is also something where our big data capability team members also do help out because oftentimes we are deploying this on cloud-based cloud -based platforms as embedded assets, either for our clients or products for ourselves. Uh, and so there again, our big data capability uh, is helping us. In fact, we collaborate actively with them to make sure that we can productionalize the work that we are uh, doing. 
right? So hopefully that provides some clarity around our big data capability and how it differs from our data science capability. Um, um, so there's another interesting question here, which is what is the scope of data science over the next 15 years? Um, I think this is a great question. Um, um, and I think it's also one that um, um, I'll, I'll highlight that um, it, it, it goes also to the heart of, you know, um, the way we see it as, as, as ZS, as a consulting firm, is, you know, there's a lot of significant advancements in obviously data science solutions almost becoming platform based, right? Uh, we have amazing toolkits um, where the cutting edge is being pushed by players such as Amazon, Google, Facebook, others, right? They're pushing amazing solutions, amazing toolkits um, that are enabling data science. Oftentimes those, those toolkits, you know, are even worrying about problems like auto ML. So how can the system automatically do its own machine learning on data sets, right? So they're really pushing the frontier on that. So over the next 15 years, I think, um, what do I see as a role of, uh, of data science consultants at ZS? As these toolkits rapidly progress, how do we best leverage these toolkits to solve our clients specific problems? General purpose toolkits are exactly that. They are general purpose. We need to solve specific problems to our, uh, for our clients to the best of our abilities because oftentimes our solutions are strategic differentiators for our client. It makes one of our clients more successful than the competitors in their marketplace. Everybody has access to the general purpose toolkit. Can we build something that's more differentiated, custom, and provides better results or output for, or better impact for our client? As a data science consultant, that's something we need to always be thinking about. How do we make our solutions as, you know, not only as uh, customized, if you will, uh, so it can work for our client uh, to its maximum potential, uh, you know, incorporate the, the, the maximum insights that we can from the domain itself specifically. Um, but also I'll call it the other piece of it from a data science evolution perspective, as data science becomes more of a um, out of the box capability or at least AI machine learning uh, approaches, certainly as they become more out of the box capabilities, one of the big roles that we'll have as data scientists is making sure that we can also, or data science consultants is we can help our clients adopt and adapt their organizations to make the most uh, of this rapidly advancing domain. So as data science consultants, I see us as bringing the forefront of data science to the industry to make sure that society as a whole is able to best benefit from these, uh, uh, you know, amazing advancements that have been happening. And I see continuing to happen over the next 15 years. So really, the it's imperative that we are at the forefront. It's imperative for us to continue to challenge ourselves to learn. But it's also imperative that we understand that the challenges of bringing a data science platform to a client are not just technology challenges um, and not just you know machine related challenges. There's often the human to machine problem that we need to solve. How do we make our clients more comfortable with depending on the machine and leveraging the machine as best as they can to help with their problems, right? Um, so that's something that um, uh, I'll uh, mention uh, specifically around uh, scope of data science over the next 15 years. Um, um, I, I, I see there's a lot of questions coming in around uh, whether our challenge is open to working pro professionals. Absolutely, our challenge is open for working professionals uh, and we will be sharing our results, uh, uh, including everybody that participates in that competition um, uh, around performance, right? Um, uh, uh, there's a question that's here about, you know, we realize that the, the challenge is going to be released on 20th July, but is it going to be a real data science problem? Yes, it is in fact going to be a real data science problem. Uh, hopefully you will find out more details on the 20th uh, about it. Um, uh, it is, um, um, hopefully you will find it an interesting, motivating problem for yourselves and gives you also uh, a flavor for 
the types of problems that you can expect to be solving as a data scientist uh, if you were to continue to join ZS, right? If you were to consider joining ZS. Um, uh, there's a there's a last question that I'll take for today, which is around will ZS be working towards creating an in-house data science platform for clients? Um, it's a great question. Um, ZS um, is uh, certainly working to set up, um, I'll call it an an end-to-end -end analytics solution for our clients in specific domains. Um, that is built on obviously, um, as you would imagine, big data platforms uh, has access to a variety of analytic workbenches, uh, uh, access to a variety of uh, algorithm libraries, uh, access to a variety of templates or we call them stencils that might be useful in solving specific problems in specific industries or specific domains. So we're building a variety of stencils and most importantly within our, uh, I'll call it in-house analytical solution, we call it Revo. Uh, you can probably learn a little bit more about it by Googling for uh, ZS Revo, um, R-E-V-O. Uh, but what we're also doing in Revo is we are building specific, specific business focused applications. Uh, and our vision for Revo is that a client can choose to um, adopt Revo end to end as their analytical platform, but they could also choose different modules of Revo that might be best suited for where they are in their journey. We're not assuming our clients don't have an, uh, you know, a big data infrastructure of their own or a data infrastructure of their own or an analytics infrastructure of their own. Many of them do. So our vision with Revo is how can we build this in a modular way so that our clients can adopt pieces of it that they may not already have within their infrastructure um, to make it more complete. So would we have our own? Uh, Yes, we would. We would, of course, leverage the work that variety of the platform vendors are doing uh, so that we continue to keep it state of the art. Okay. So hopefully that answers your question around um, us creating an in-house data science platform for our clients. Um, with that, um, I know it's a uh, uh, couple of minutes before uh, we end, but um, I'd like to thank, um, I see there's over 200 attendees to today's uh, uh, webinar, I'd like to thank you all for joining. Uh, we hope it was a good use of, a time, of your time to learn a little bit more about ZS, the types of data science AI ML work that we are doing, uh, and a little bit about the challenge and the type of role you might have at ZS if you choose to pursue that path. Um, and I'll wish you all a uh, very good, very best of luck for the challenge and for your future endeavors. Thank you very much and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.